Ladies and gentlemen, members of parliament, lords, it is my great pleasure to welcome you here tonight to the sixth annual Seftus Karadina and the Turkish, Kurdish and Turkish Cypriot Community Achievement Awards. My name is Ibrahim Dogus and I am the founder of Seftus Center for Turkish Studies. I'd like to thank the Park Plaza Westminster Hotel and Madhus Catering uh, and our generous sponsors for, 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 their, um, for their generous contributions for, for this evening, Cobra Beer, Just Eat, Alton & Co. Each year, we have seen this event grow. Tonight, we are delighted to see so many pro people from the world of academia, politics, from so many embassies, businesses, and from so many different communities in the UK. We are also delighted to be presenting some special awards tonight to recognize some special people and organizations from the Turkish, Kurdish and Turkish Cypriot communities. The Center for Turkish Studies is the only neutral platform where Turkish and Kurdish political leaders and intellectuals from across the political spectrum can come to attend events, speak and engage in conversation. As you know, politics in Turkey is polarized and at times abrasive. Yet, we managed to bring senior figures from all political parties in Turkey together for mature debate and informed discussion. In this, the Center for Turkish Studies is unique. No other organization does what we do. The packed meetings and, and seminars and high-level expert speakers we have hosted our testament to the success of Center for Turkish Studies. What brings us together this evening is not just fine food and fine company. What brings us together is our interest in Turkey and Turkish and Kurdish affairs. What brings us together is our belief in the strong bonds of friendship between Britain and Turkey and all of its peoples. What brings us together is our shared belief that Turkey should be a peaceful, stable, democratic and secular country with free and fair elections, the rule of law, protection of minorities and freedom of expression. And what breaks all of our hearts is when we see the government of Turkey so often fall short of these ideals. It breaks our hearts when we see political opposition and journalists locked up in prisons, when we see peaceful demonstrations broken, by, broken up by force, when we see human rights violated, and when we see military, military violence used against citizens of, of Turkey. Since the attempted coup of last year, 112,000 civil servants have been dismissed and over 120,000 people have been detained. Surely, it is time for those locked up to be released unless a crime has been committed and guilt can be proved. Media outlets have been closed down and journalists, members of parliament and trade unionists have been locked up without trial. We want to send a strong message to the government of Turkey that all members of parliament from HDP and CHP as well as councillors, mayors, trade unionists and journalists and all other political activists must be released. What's more, in Turkey, today's Turkey, thank you. What's more, in today's Turkey, the May Day march has been banned. The Pride March has been banned. There are curfews and tens of thousands have been displaced from their homes. At times, the government of Turkey has seemed intent on creating division and discord between its citizens, its own citizens, and between Turkey and the world. This intolerable situation is not just det detrimental to, to Kurdish and Turkish society of Turkey and to the lives of millions of citizens. It is detrimental to the, to the economy of Turkey, which rel relies on overseas investment and trade. In the short term of today's Turkey, things might look okay. The Istanbul Stock Exchange hit record highs in, in August, amid signs that the Turkish economy is set to continue to grow rapidly in 2017. Turkey's GDP is projected to increase by at least 5% this year. And the Borsa Istanbul 100 Index has risen by more than 40% since January. But in the medium and long term, investors need to see peace and stability, not mass arrests and riot police on streets. 
This is a country which aspires to be a member of, of the European Union, a country which is essential to the stability of the region. Right now, Turkey falls short of where we, want it, where we would want it to be. And that's why we are here. Because we know that through dialogue and campaigning and scrutiny and pressure, things can and will improve. Because we share a belief. Because, because we share a belief that the United Kingdom can be a moderating friend to Turkey. And because we know from our own experience in Northern Ireland that there can be a process that leads to peace and reconciliation. I hope that the British government shares its experience in Northern Ireland with the government of Turkey and encourage them to agree on a long-lasting peace with the Kurds and better relations with, it, with its uh, minority communities. In 2013, the Turkish government was brave enough to come, to come to the negotiation table. We should now call on it to return to the table and resolve the pressing Kurdish question with dialogue and peace once and for all. There is no way other than negotiation to resolve any conflict. The government of Turkey must resume peace talks with the Kurdish representatives and build positive relations with the Kurds in neighboring countries, Syria, Iraq, Iran. Everyone deserves human rights and peace, no matter where they live. We hope the same can be done for Cyprus too, where we seek a solution which is acceptable for the whole of island of Cyprus. Seftus will continue to be an important part of that dialogue, providing the platform for discussions and exchange of views. We organize visits and seminars, lectures and publications, bringing together different shades of opinion from the UK and Turkey to explore our common ground and shared perspectives and, and principles. This has never been more important. It is not just important for, the, for, for Turkey, it is important for the UK too. As we leave the EU, we will need to strengthen our bonds with friends, increase our international trade with new partners and look outwards to the world. Crucially, with the rise of racist incidents in the, uh, since the EU referendum, we need to celebrate the role of migrant communities in the UK, now more than ever. These communities, these communities make immense contributions to our economy and society. In particular, tonight, we celebrate the contributions made by Turkish, Kurdish and Turkish Cypriot people to the UK economy and culture of the UK over many decades. That we are home to so many people from across the globe gives the UK a web of connections and influence across the Middle East, Asia, Africa and the Indian subcontinent. Migrants add tens of billions of pounds to the UK economy every year. They make us stronger and enrich our lives and we celebrate them tonight. Finally, I would like to thank our sponsors, Just Eat, Cobra, Alton & Co. once again. I'd like to thank everyone who took part in the Seftus event this year. I'd like to thank the Seftus staff who do all the hard work, Buket, Niall, Daniel, Bilge, Özge, and all our volunteers. I'd like to thank all of you for supporting our event this evening. There's one more person, my partner on this journey, my best friend, my wife, Raife. She's here tonight with our wonderful son, Mirza. Don't forget, don't forget, tonight, is a fundraising gala. It's a fundraising gala. I repeat, it's a fundraising gala. <laughs> to do our work, we need goodwill, time, and contributions from experts. But most of all, we need money. We are not funded by any government or institution. We rely on generosity of people like you who are here tonight. So I hope you will help us raise funds with your generous donations. You can do it here tonight, or you can do it online. Have a wonderful evening, wonderful time this evening. Enjoy the fantastic food and music, and good luck for the year ahead. Thank you very much. <laughs>